Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. Choosing a lens implant can be overwhelming for patients. There are so many options and no lens is perfect. Comparing the pros and cons of each lens prior to cataract surgery can be stressful. And when taking into consideration the out-of-pocket costs with some lens implants, it makes the process overwhelming, often making patients feel lost. So let's make the process a little easier. Let's assume every lens implant was free. Which lens implant should you get? Putting cost aside for a moment, which lens implant provides the highest level of clarity? If you have a cataract, chances are a monofocal is good, a toric is good, a light adjustable is good, but how good is good enough? For a moment, assume every lens was free. Which lens would provide the highest quality vision and which lens would you want? Well, the first thing to consider is the answer depends on if we're talking about vision clarity with glasses or clarity without glasses. But if it's free, let's be real, people would want to see well without glasses. They can wear glasses if they want, maybe just sunglasses or over-the-counter readers, but they would prefer their vision to be clear when they are not wearing their glasses. So let's assume we're comparing vision without glasses. Let's say I wanted the highest quality far vision and I'm okay with over-the-counter reading glasses, and I have a choice between a basic monofocal lens, a toric lens, and a light adjustable lens and they are all sitting here for free. I can pick any one I want. Which of these lenses should I choose? For me, today, if it were free, there's no question I would choose the light adjustable lens. And I'll tell you why. With all the lenses available out there, sure there are subtle differences between their optical characteristics, such as spherical aberration, chromatic aberration, index of refraction, modular transfer function, Abbey number, etc. Those all make a difference. But what makes an even bigger difference is the amount of sphere and cylinder in your residual refractive error. In simple terms, I want to be as close as possible to the bullseye. Not convinced? Pretend you're in a clinic and you're interviewing two patients after their cataract surgery. Which patient do you suspect is happier? Patient A, who has one and a half diopters of residual astigmatism, their lens implant has a high Abbey number of 55. Or patient B, they have a plano refraction and their lens implant has a lower Abbey number of 47. Technically, the Abbey number of 55 is optically superior, but I would want the vision of patient B. FYI, you know the healthy human crystalline lens has an Abbey number of just 47? And a pair of polycarbonate glasses have an Abbey number of just 30? Let me give you an example here. Let's say I sat in this exam chair and I'm gonna look at this chart of letters across the room. If I have about a diopter and a half of astigmatism in my cornea and I get the basic monofocal lens, there's about an 80% chance that I see this line at the top or better without glasses. If I got a toric monofocal that reduces astigmatism, there's about an 80% chance that I see this line or better without glasses. The toric is not adjustable, but it does reduce the astigmatism. If I got the light adjustable lens, there's an 80% chance that I see this last line or better without glasses. That is extremely valuable for someone who wants to see far street signs without glasses. So when you think of it that way, the lens that gives you the highest likelihood of clear, far away vision, day and night, is the light adjustable lens. Keep in mind, you can achieve 20-20 far, excellent vision without glasses with all the options, whether it's a basic monofocal, a torque, or the light adjustable lens. But you're twice as likely to have 20-20 vision with the light adjustable lens. So think about it. How good is good enough? Are you okay with good enough or do you want the best chance at the clearest vision? Fortunately, we live in a time where there are many good options and the best keeps getting better. Not every patient is a candidate for each of these lenses. So please discuss with your surgeon which options are best for you. There are situations where I would not recommend a light adjustable lens, but I'll save that for a future video. And if someone does not want glasses for far or near, then the options expand further. Monovision, mini monovision, these are options where the target for each eye is set differently. Also, Presbyopia reducing lens implants such as the Panoptics, Synergy, Vividity, Symphony, Clearview 3, 
Aptera IC8, the upcoming J&J Odyssey, and the just released LAL Plus. These can all increase your odds of not needing any glasses far or near. They expand your range of vision without glasses, but at the expense of your quality of vision, some more than others. Choosing the right lens for every patient is not easy, but when you are a successful matchmaker as a surgeon and you see your patient extremely happy after surgery, it's very fulfilling. So best of luck to you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoy videos like this and want to see more, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned. I will try and make more helpful content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.